You're listening to STB Radio. Hello everyone, I'm Smita Mishra and this is STP Radio, live from STP Con at uh, San Francisco, California. And we are here to interview Melissa Tondi today. So let's see what she's got to say. Um, Melissa is the head of QA at shopathome.com and she's also the founder of a community Denver Mobile and Quality DMAC which kind of points she is based off uh, Denver. She has had significant experience working in and speaking publicly about mobile testing. So Melissa, you want to quickly start with your introduction? And yeah, so I'm excited to be here at SDPCon. I've been looking forward to the conference for a while now. Just got done uh, my test uh, session um, this afternoon on expanding your mobile test offerings. Um, good session got a lot of really great um, questions and I think a lot of collaborative conversation mm -hmm. um, and as you'd mentioned yeah I'm heading up uh, quality engineering at shop at home uh, founder of DMAC and also uh, an advisory board member to our um, front range squad which is the software quality wow. assurance association nice. in Denver yeah okay. so I'm, I'm as much as giving back to the community as is uh, consuming from the community so I'm awesome. excited yeah great. so how was your day today so far it was great, it was um, great. yeah so I spent the morning kind of prepping for my my workshop so I wasn't able to attend anything this morning but um, yeah the today's workshop was really good I, a, a lot but, of enlightening um, mm -hmm. issues that kind of people brought up some challenges and some really good wins I think right so what, now what were you talking about um, which Sorry, say that again? The workshop today. Oh, yeah. Yes. So it was expanding your mobile test offerings. So basically, I I have spoken on this a little bit of, um, in one-hour sessions. I mm -hmm. presented um, mobile test plan um, at STPCon a couple times, fall and spring of 2015. Um, and when I was approached to maybe expand that to a workshop session, it was very intriguing to me um, because I knew that there was a lot of uh -huh. content out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so really what I wanted to do was give um, testers and, and managers the ability to um, understand what mobile has done to introduce um, into our current quality engineering uh -huh. practices um, and then give kind of good actionable um, tests and test types that mobile introduces and kind of set those out so that we can expand our test plan and, and offerings either for mature mobile strategies or up and coming and, and newer built automation strategies. Awesome, awesome. I'm sure the participants there had fun and they learned a lot. So did, did they engage a lot? Did you, did yeah. you get some feedback? Yeah, and so if you've know if you ever heard me speak, I, I definitely, I, I kind of start out with a couple things. Number one, I say I'm not a slide reader. So the slides that I, I present are more for people to read and consume after the session. Um, mm -hmm. And I really like to tap into the participants themselves. So I ask a lot of kind of uh, opening questions and remarks to making sure that the content that I'm talking on and, and, and delivering is relevant to the people participating that day. So it's always fun to watch how a session takes on a life of its own after asking some key questions. So there was a lot of collaboration. Um, I learned some things. I hope everyone that attended the session learned a lot of things. Um, and I think I took back as much of it as hopefully everyone else took wow. out of it themselves. <laughs> That's cool. So I, I think you were talking about device metrics and device pro pro yes. pro profilation sorry, mm -hmm. uh, in your sessions. So is it truly a key topic right now in mobile? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, you know, f about four years ago, um, one, of my, um, one of my roles was to help build, start and build, and then maintain a, mm -hmm. a, a, a lab. And I kind of used the lab as a catch-all for um, a team of people, processes, and then tools in which to either create or to bring into the lab. And, and mostly the focus was on mobile. And one of the key components of the first six months of starting this lab um, was a technique to help uh, individual test teams or companies mm -hmm. um, figure out how do we bring in a device 
uh, how, when do we determine when to bring in a device into our lab and test against it? And most of the time, people's answers were very varied. So a lot of times, the only devices that companies or testing teams had the ability to test on were their personal devices. So it was always, you know, a, a mass email or instant message um, saying, who has this particular device with this operating wow. system? And then we always, you know, kind of um, matured into having physical device labs mm -hmm. where they were locked down or mobile carts and all that. And I knew that there was something that was a little bit in between because whenever we would add to our great device lab, we never really had a way to ensure that the testing that was done on those newer devices was actually valuable. So yep. one of the big um, key things that came out of our R&D our of the lab was developing the device matrix technique. Nice. And so, yeah, so I think that it's a really good way for companies who either have budgetary constraints or maintenance constraints um, on devices, they have the ability to, to make some educated and skilled decisions on what and when to bring into the lab and mm -hmm. how to maintain them and, and really make sure that you have the most testing on the permutations of devices with as few devices as possible, right. making sure that there's right. a high percentage of coverage. Uh -huh. and, and what about uh, the role of tools here? Do you, have you really used a lot of them? Do you recommend them for mobile testing? Yeah, so I still think you know automation tools in particular for mobile is still in its infancy. They're definitely... Um, a lot of companies, um, commercial, mm -hmm. and then, of course, the open source community that have invested a lot of time and effort and money, of course, into developing mobile uh -huh. automation tools. And I think at this point, um, really the main decisions are, you know, are you going to go down the open source approach or are you going to go okay. down the commercial um, approach? So I, I, I see a lot of tools um, that are really getting a lot of investment in research and development and again money and, uh, and other investment um, I still think it's, a, it's still a bit in its infancy but um, you know almost every week now it seems like there's another tool that's added on the market so I think um, those people who have a good automation strategy in place regardless mm -hmm. of whether it's based on mobile or web or something else um, will if they have a good automation strategy in place there should also be a good way to quickly analyze the tools that are coming out and make sure that um, you know, we're giving the testing team not just one silver bullet tool in which to automate, but um, really concentrating kind of on combination. In, of, exactly. Yeah. And I feel very strongly that uh, testers, and which I've kind of started using the term quality engineers recently, yep. but that, you know, part of that engineering piece is to design and develop a strategy first, and then uh -huh. you then overlay tools second. So a good tester is going to design a strategy agnostic of a tool, but then use the tool that's appropriate to deliver the strategy awesome. they put in place. Yep. Yep. So I understand the device metrics and then there's a role for tools to play, even if they are not so mature right now, but there are new tools coming up, plus the, these tools are evolving over a period of time. But since you also have experience across different domains, like probably healthcare, telecom, retail, so I want to, I want to really understand that how is mobile testing different in different do in these domains, or is it like mobile testing is really common? It's just about the domain that's different. So, yes, it's funny that you asked that question because that was one of the first points that we had discussed in my session this afternoon. Um, you know, I think um, hopefully for those of us who were around in mm -hmm. the dot com um, boom in the '90s and and the eventual bust mm -hmm. in the in the early 2000s, yeah. um, I think a lot of that. Um, came out of the unknown of a new and disruptive technology. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that I really feel strongly about is learning from our mistakes. There were a lot of great things that came out of the dot-com boom, um, and there were a lot of mistakes that we made as well. And so um, I see mobile um, maybe not as being as um, enormous as the dot-com boom, but mm -hmm. I, I also see it as a d disruptive technology. And so one thing that I really make a point is to really – take a couple steps back when there's a new and disruptive technology being introduced into organizations and really finding the commonalities between how we're currently testing mm -hmm. and where some of those common themes can be adopted um, to absorb that new and emerging technology. A good, good, well-structured and formatted quality engineering group um, will be able to handle 
adopting new technology mm. as it comes much better when they have a good strategy in place and how to adopt that. That is true. That is true. Well said. So moving away from a little bit of technology and mobile testing, I'll go to the other side of Melissa that I know is very popular. <laughs> That's that you have a knack for building communities. So what motivates you to do that? Um, I, you know, again, it's, it's, I think for me, when I started in my career, a little over 20 years ago, um, I absolutely depended on the community to get my feet wet. Most of us um, didn't, you know, graduate from university or start our, our career thinking that we were going mm -hmm. to go into software testing. Mm -hmm. And most of us kind of fell into yep. that industry yep. um, for a variety of different reasons, as yep. I did. Um, and there, I really relied on my community, one being Squad, um, which has been around in, in Denver for almost 20 years uh -huh. now, um, and other people that had been in the industry or other people who understood that building a community of people outside of their place of work, yep. but also including their mm -hmm. place of work, um, w w the ability to share that information so that we didn't to continue help them grow exactly, and we didn't repeat the same mistakes yep. that others were doing. Yep. So we didn't have yep. to reinvent the wheel. Yep. And so, because oh, okay. me really kind of consuming from the community early on in my career was so important to me, and and really kind of made me yep. who I am and where I am now in my True. career, I felt very strongly about giving back to the community and so I started that with mm -hmm. speaking and sharing my mm -hmm. experiences yep. um, in, you know at first at squad and some other local user groups and then um, kind of building that up and credibility and expertise and presenting at conferences like STP con where I have a larger platform and across you know in nationally and internationally um, I, I, I felt very strongly and then kind of in the past few years building communities from the ground that had very specific purposes and outcomes and goals in mind. So I think, and I think now in the latter part of my career, um, I, I feel very strongly about giving and supporting and yeah. giving back yeah. and building the community now. Awesome. So how do you look at uh, Software Test Pro, the STP community? What do you think about it? You've been you've been a part of it for very really long now. I have. I, I think this is my fifth time, maybe fourth or fifth time speaking at STP Con. And I'll say, you know, I think the community, the people that come here are learners. Um, not only are they learners, but when they have something to share, they feel very comfortable um, to share that. And so I think the way that our, our, our workshop sessions are set up and our collaborative um, one hour long sessions towards the latter part of the conference time um, are set up so that people feel comfortable not only asking the questions but also sharing their experiences. I know that I certainly emphasize that in my sessions. And, and you know, and, and just as I had mentioned earlier, um, I certainly, you know, speaking for three hours in this workshop session, you know, it's kind of the default is that the people are looking at the speaker, but I get just as much back from hearing other people share their oh, examples yeah. and, and, and experiences mm -hmm. as much as I hope that they take out of my session. And I think STP Con is a perfect form, forum and structure to um, really support that and awesome. really kind of give back to the awesome. community. So you're looking forward to the next three days? I sure am. I can't <laughs> wait. Yeah, it's oh, nice. Great. It's nice to have the session out and yeah, you know under nice. my belt now. And now I'm looking forward to being a participant in any, the sessions. Any any particular favorite session that you're going to? I'm uh, well. The session I was going to say I'm very, uh, very looking much forward to to our uh, brewery tour tomorrow. Uh, so that's always a good thing. Um, yeah, you know I think um, I think there's some really good. I'm actually really excited about the keynotes this year. Very um, nice. Really enjoyed uh, the keynote. Uh, keynotes from uh, the fall sessions and so I always like to hear um, you know how the keynote speakers um, kind of tailor their message to the wider audience and so I'm really awesome. looking forward to tapping into that and seeing what conversations kind of spur off from from for some of those keynotes otherwise I'm gonna come great. in and attend as many sessions as possible <laughs> for the next few days great so here here is again a different question for you Melissa it's just because both of us uh, both of us women are talking here but since we are women in this in in this industry do you think you have had it any difficult or any different than your colleagues who write M in the gender block? Oh, such an interesting question because this is not the first time I've been asked this question. Yeah. And I would <laughs> I'm say, not surprised. I, I, I say that I think personally I have been very fortunate and maybe a lot of it is my personality mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, um, maybe going in a little bit more 
uh, ignorant to the fact that there is was or is and uh-huh. still is a, a gender um, inequality gap. But um, you know, I've been very fortunate in my career, and I've had really good um, leaders and managers and mentors that have supported me regardless of my gender. But um, I certainly know and have heard a lot of women's experiences where they haven't had it as fortunate as I have. And so, in addition to the community, I also feel very strongly of supporting those who may have felt like they um, have been either discriminated against or have not been given the same opportunities as their male counterparts so I feel like in you know in in my point in my career that I can be just as much of an advocate for software testers as well as women in technology awesome so I'm I'm going to ask you my last question here so since you've been around mobile testing for really long I think it will be only fair for me to ask you what is the future of mobile testing as you see it and if there is any advice you would like to give to those software testers who are pursuing mobile testing as their career like which direction should they go and where is mobile testing going yeah um, I still think you know kind of the um, developing automation or other types of testing performance automation tools um, around mobile, as I mentioned earlier, is still a little bit in in its infancy. Mm -hmm. Um, I think IoT and wearables um, and other integrated technologies is going to be um, a very interesting facet as more and more mainstream companies adopt that technology as their product offerings. And so I think I would probably um, encourage anyone that was looking either at starting a career in testing and focusing on mobile Mm -hmm. or expanding their own career, testing Mm -hmm. career, to emphasize mobile, to really understand kind of gray box testing and how that um, really uh, kind of correlates with uh, IoT. Um, Really understand what um, the IPv4, which is the um, current uh, 32-bit IP addresses, and Mm -hmm. it's it's cap at 4.3 billion devices, to IPv6, which will infinitely expound that amount and kind of what that means to um, IoT in general. Um, And really, just more importantly, I think IoT is going to be a disruptor and hopefully yep. we learn um, what how how we've been able to um, either quickly or not so quickly adopt and adapt to mobile being a disruptor. I mm-hmm. think IoT and other new emerging technologies will, um, you know, l- let's learn from our mistakes and let's not repeat them, but let's kind of um, focus and emphasize on what we've done well and how we've been able to be adaptable with I- disruptive technology that way. So I would focus on, on those areas. I think really? those are very interesting. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thanks for sharing your vision. It was a pleasure interviewing you. So hoping to see you around next three days and catching up with you again more. Absolutely. Thank you and enjoy STPCon, everybody. Thank you, everyone.